Immortals. I am the booktube goddess, the number one drag queen booktuber on YouTube. Now, I've gone over the Hugo Awards, which is the one of the top awards for science fiction and fantasy, and I've gone over the Newbery Awards for children's books, but someone in my live stream mentioned the Nebula Awards, uh, which is another science fiction and fantasy award, but it's also prestigious because it's awarded by other science fiction and fantasy writers to their peers. And by the way, if you're interested in my live streams, they happen every Saturday, usually around noontime Pacific time, and it's when we chit chat about books and drag and all sorts of things. Anyway, also while you're here, why don't you subscribe to my channel if you aren't already and give this video a thumbs up. So what are the Nebula Awards? They are awarded by the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America, SFWA, at a yearly conference. Unlike the Hugo Awards, where the books that are listed under that year are published the previous year, like the 2020 Hugo Awards were for books published in 2019, the Nebula Awards, the year matches the dates that the books are published. So the 2019 Nebula Awards are for books published in 2019. So let's go over the Nebula Awards. The best novel is one that was not even listed as a Hugo Award. It is A Song for a New Day by Sarah Pinkster. Now there's usually a lot of overlap between the Nebula and the Hugos, so it's no surprise that there are three nominees that are also Hugo nominees, and those are The 10,000 Doors of January by Alex Harrow, A Memory Called Empire by Arcady Martin, which won the Hugo, and Gideon the Nines by Tamsin Muir. Now three books here were not nominated for Hugos, and one of which has won, and those books are Mark of Cain by Charles E. Gannon, Gods of Jade and Shadow by Sylvia Moreno Garcia, and the winner, A Song for a New Day by Sarah Pinsker. Now let's look up each of these books that were not listed as a Hugo. If you're interested in those other books, look at my Hugo Awards and I go over those. Okay, A Song for a New Day. This is the Nebula winner. In the before, when the government didn't prohibit large public gatherings, Loose Cannon, I love that name, Loose Cannon was on top of the world. One of her songs had just taken off and she was on her way to becoming a star. Now in the after, terror attacks and deadly viruses have led the government to ban concerts and Loose's connection to the world, her music, her purpose is closed off forever. She does what she has to do. She performs in illegal concerts to a small but passionate community. Okay, well, since this is a Nebula winner, I'll add it to my TBR. A dystopian, post-apocalyptic, maybe, world about a rocker or a musician isn't one I'm usually drawn to, but it won the Nebula, so we'll see how it goes. And looking at the two other books that were not nominated for a Hugo, but were for a Nebula, Mark of Cain, Charles E. Gannon. It's been two years since Cain Riordan was relieved of his command for following both his orders and his conscience. Now he's finally received the message he's been waiting for, a summons to visit the ancient and enigmatic Dornani. And this time, Making contact is not just professional, but personal. The Dornani have his mortally wounded love, Elena Corcoran, in their unthinkably advanced medical facilities. Okay, this is another writer I'm not familiar with, haven't heard of this book, but this is a type of science fiction book that I sometimes draw into. It's a little bit of a military sci-fi, but also it seems to really focus on a well-developed, unique alien, which I always appreciate. And finally, The Gods of Jade and Shadow by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. The jazz age is in full swing, but Cassiopeia Toon is too busy cleaning the floors of her wealthy grandfather's house to listen to any fast tunes. Nevertheless, she dreams of a life far from her dusty small town in southern Mexico. 
a life she can call her own. Yet this new life seems as distant as the stars until the day she finds a curious wooden box in her grandfather's room. She opens it and accidentally frees the spirit of the Mayan god of death, who requests her help in recovering his throne from his treacherous brother. Failure will mean Cassiopeia's demise, but success could make her dreams come true. Oh, I really like the sound of this one. I love the jazz age. I love the 20s, that Art Deco period. And we have Mayan gods being released in the 20th century. What more could you ask for? I think I'm going to add this one to my TBR. Now, going over the other Nebula winners in other categories, we have Best Novella. And the winner is This Is How You Lose the Time War by Amal L. Motar and Max Gladstone. And this was also the winner in the Hugo under the same category. Not unusual. It happens all the time. And for Best Novelette, we have Carp Glitter, or Carpe Glitter, by Kat Rambo. Best Short Story, the winner is Give the Family My Love by A.T. Greenblatt. And next is the Ray Bradbury Nebula Award for Outstanding Dramatic Presentation. And the winner is Good Omens, Hard Times, written by Neil Gaiman. And I believe this is also the winner of the Hugo in the same category. And next is an award I really appreciate, the Andre Norton Nebula Award for Middle Grade and Young Adult Fiction. The winner is Riverland by Fran Wilde. Let's take a look at that one. When things go bad, sisters Eleanor and Mike hide in a secret place under Eleanor's bed telling monster stories. Often it seems those stories and their mother's house magic are all that keep them safe from both busybodies and their dad's temper. But when their father breaks a family heirloom, a glass witch ball, a river suddenly appears beneath the bed, and Eleanor and Mike fall into a world where dreams are born, nightmares struggle to break into the real world, and secrets have big consequences. Full of both adventure and heart, Riverland is a story about the bond between two sisters and how they must make their own magic to protect each other and save the ones they love. Okay, I'm definitely going to put Riverland on my TBR when I was talking about children's, young adult, middle grade books I enjoy. It is sort of this type of science fiction fantasy adventure. And I'm kind of curious about the nominees in this category. So just real quick, the nominees include Cog by Greg Van Eekhout, Sal and Gabby Break the Universe by Carlos Hernandez, Catfishing on Catnet by Naomi Kritzer, Dragon Pearl by Yoon Ha Lee, and Peace Sprout Chen, Battle of the Champions by Henry Layen. Now next up is Best Game Writing. The winner is The Outer Worlds by Leonard Boyarsky, Kate Dollarhide, Paul Kirsch, Chris Latoile, Daniel McPhee, Carrie Patel, Nate Potter, Mark Soskin, and Megan Starks. Now I haven't played this game, so you're going to have to let me know in the comments below if it's worth it. Now, if there are other literary awards that you would like me to go over, let me know in the comments below. Until we meet again, may all the books you read be blessed. Yeah.